you are going to be placing your characters out onto specific advantages or disadvantages, determining who and what you want to attack based on the turn order. <laughs> Hey guys, and welcome back to the Unfiltered Gamer board game review. And today's game up on the tabletop is by Danger Dog Games, and it's called Terrain Realm of Warriors. Plays two to seven players, takes about 30 to 90 minutes to play, and it's for ages 10 and up. And in the game Terrain, you're going to be gathering a house from back in the medieval ages, and you will be then pushing your characters across the realm. You're going to be basically trying to attack your opponents and gather honorable or dishonorable points in the game. And these things are going to come from fighting. And fighting is going to be accrued by playing cards face down and flipping them up and successfully beating your opponent in the best two out of three. Now, of course, you're also going to have things like items as well as advantages on your train or even disadvantages on your train. And you can utilize these things to better your attacks and your defense. Whoever gets a certain amount of points before any other player is going to be the winner of the game. Let's take a look down below. I'll show you what comes in the game, how to play, and then we'll come up and play and talk about ourselves. Welcome to the realm of terrain, and as you can see, this is what you're going to be getting in the game. There's the game board, there are the terrain pieces, you're going to get an item deck, an event deck, and a first player marker. These are all the different houses, which will all have their own unique trait, as well as a morale tracker, which is basically your health, and of course your player turn order and references for the different items in the game. There are attacking and defense cards that you'll set aside, because everyone will be using these, and you're also going going to be getting your specific realm tokens that are going to have a false decoy token and a real character token that you'll be utilizing on this map here. You're also going to be getting these victory points, whether they be honorable, which are these color here, and dishonorable tokens, which are over here. And you're going to start off by trying to get five of these guys here. Go ahead and set the terrain deck over to the side here and place the number of terrain tiles based on the number of players on this board here. Give every single player one of these and position their morale tracker to five. Everybody's gonna have five to start with. And then simply begin the game. Players in turn order are going to first start by taking their specific guild insignias and placing them down on the board. So for instance, the Benevel is going to have these guys here, their decoy and their real one, and they'll secretly place these on these tiles here. And these tiles have advantages and they have disadvantages. So that will probably factor into whether or not you want to play your real character or your false one onto specific tiles. And of course, with more players comes more tiles in the game. And then we'll go ahead and use this one as well, the Tygon or Tagon, in which case we'll have these guys here, and these guys are going to go also place on the board. And because there's four tiles here, that means this is technically a four-player game, so I'll just go ahead and put two more sets down. And then, after that, everybody's simply going to reveal. And this is basically to determine who is where and who may or may not be fighting one or another. So then you're going to start off by going and selecting the first player, and the first player is going to be Benevel, for instance. And you're going to go down this player turn area here. The first thing you can do is choose one preparation. A preparation is either search, venture, or you can do a terrain advantage. To search, you simply draw two cards from the deck here. These are item cards, and they're going to give you certain benefits, whether it be an equipable item, something that happens instantaneously that you probably won't like, or maybe even a weapon of some sort. There's also some unique things like a trap here, or uh, some instants that you can use, like you can go ahead and parry somebody's attack, or usurp. So you'll be drawing two from this deck here, and you can hold up to five. The next thing you can do is Venture, which lets you move to an adjacent space with your actual character. So for instance, if I wanted to, I can move over here. Uh, another thing you could choose to do is you could use the terrain advantage provided you're on it. So for instance, this one here says scavenge up to two items from any other terrains in play. Or this one here, draw three items, keep two, and then place the remaining back on top of the item deck. However, if there's a disadvantage, you have to follow that disadvantage if there is one involving whatever it may tell you. Sometimes it'll be like you can only draw one item or you can only draw from the discard pile. Simply just follow along with whatever that specific one says. Then you'll perform two actions based on the action phase here, letting you either A, draw an item from the deck, B, use an item that you currently have. You could also duel another player and you can do charity, which lets you discard four of your item cards to take one of these victory points here. And finally, you can rest, skipping both of your actions to gain a morale, which usually happens when you don't have a lot of morale left, moving yourself up one, which keeps your health up. 
And the one thing I need to talk about, really, other than all those you probably already understand, is fighting. And fighting's pretty simple. You'll give the attacker the attacking da cards and the defender the defending cards, and it'll play out like kind of like a rock, paper, scissors match. The attacker will place a card face down, the defender will place a card face down, you'll flip them up, and then you'll check to see if the attacker hits a space the defender is not defending. So in this case, the attacker is hitting the area here in the chest, and the defender does not have that space highlighted, which means that he does get the hit through. Best two out of three, and you'll keep the rest of the cards, and then you'll do it again. You'll place one out, place one out, face down, flip it up, and check right and right. That's a block. And then one more time. Ha! And that's a left and a left, and that's a block. In which case, that will end combat. Now, if the attacker is successful two or more times, the attacker will get one of these guys here. If he's successful three times, he can choose to either A, steal one from his opponent, and it's a dishonorable, or he can simply take an extra one of these guys here. And the defender can also gain one, provided he wins three out of the... Uh, three out of the three attempts, but he's only going to be able to select either one of these or one of these, depending on whether he wants to steal it or can steal it or not. And that's pretty much the game. Basically what happens afterwards is everyone will do that turn. Then you'll draw an event card and read that event card and see what it says and then do what it says. In which case something might happen where these terrain pieces might go away and they might bring out new ones on the board or maybe you'll have to deal with some type of plague. And then you'll pass this marker over to the next player in a clockwise order. And once again, you'll take these guys off. You'll place them back on the board randomly as to how you select in turn order and play players will take their turn actions. They'll go ahead and do their, their uh, prepper, prepare phase and their action phase. And then whoever ends up getting the victory points in to win the game, which I believe is five, is the winner of the game terrain. It's a pretty simple concept as to how to play the game, but it's definitely got a little bit of a combative nature and some interesting choices. Let's talk about it above. So let's talk about terrain realm of warriors. This game here is kind of a party game mixed in with like a combat action based game. You are going to be placing your characters out onto specific advantages or disadvantages, determining who and what you want to attack attack based on the turn order, utilizing your decoy not only to pretend like you're going somewhere, but also certain cards will utilize your decoy in different ways, maybe allowing you to attack a specific character in that area, or moving it along the board to do something to somebody. So having that decoy as something unique and interesting with an extra twist added to the cards is definitely cool. Not only that, but of course, taking your actions to either gain those items, getting rid of them to gain victory points, making a clock uh, function based basically in the game to make sure that if people aren't attacking each other enough, somebody can win just by simply discarding those cards. And choosing the best spaces can basically accomplish that goal is a nice twist as well. And not only that, but the attacking. The attacking is fairly straightforward. It's like rock, paper, scissors with four cards, and as the as it goes down, as it winds down, you're basically gonna know what your opponent has in their hand and you have like this 50-50 chance most of the time, except on some occasions, which I guess this is either gonna be a negative for some of you or maybe a positive. If you know what's in your opponent's hand and they played two of the cards and they flip over another one down, that you're gonna know they're gonna have like left hand and chest and right hand and chest, which means they don't have the head anymore so I can play the head to win. That actually can happen on the occasion, but it's not guaranteed to and based on how you play will change that. And of course there are items in the game as well well, that are going to allow you to do certain things like you'll be able to remove your cards that you played face down after flipping them up and return them to your hand and then do it again. Or some of them are going to let you take your cards back in for the last and final fight. They basically let you kind of do a redo or a change so that you don't goof up if you can possibly help it. The events in the deck are nice as well because I was actually curious how are you going to get more terrain out because when you're playing a two or three player game you kind of want the board to be switching around and it does do that basically the events here can do all sorts of things and sometimes it'll be based on the types of terrain out there for instance if the ruin or desert is in play all all players that occupy any terrain must draw a card from the top of the discard pile in turn order that's actually rather nice uh, or maybe something like this one here referendum the first player token holder chooses any terrain they wish to be replaced all players will vote yes or no and then you'll go ahead and replace that if people say yes, and then they'll get to draw another card. And it's always the player who has the first player marker to draw these little events here, which of course is how you can change the train and how you can affect the players. And that's pretty much the idea of the game. It's, it's, it's rather simple as far as it goes, but with a lot of players, it's actually a lot of fun. I really enjoy the fact that you can move around the board and kind of switch up your tactics based on who is winning and how they're winning and how you can kind of 
creep ahead. You can join alliances and you can kind of uh, say, you know, like you do a lot of social aspects in the game. I'm going to go over here and over here and you should go over there. And this guy here, he already went his first. However, he's got the most points. So we should kind of team up against him to start stealing points from him. And so all this connivery starts going into it. Oh, what item cards do you have? And oh, I can't tell you exactly what I have, but this does something that can benefit me in battle. Oh, okay, you should fight him then. And so you start hearing all this social play at work. This game doesn't play well at two and three players, in my opinion. I want to play this game at four or more players, period, because that is where all the shenanigans get into play. That's where stuff starts happening. Yes, you can play it at two players. Yes, you can play it at three players, and it does work. There's nothing that changes the game necessarily as far as gameplay goes, but socially and strategically, yes. You are only having one opponent in the two-player game, so you're basically just going back and forth trying to place your token on the place that they're at or where they're not at if you don't want to fight. And it, it just kind of comes back to a back and forth, my turn, your turn sort of thing. But with a lot of players, that's where all the craziness starts to ensue, and that's what makes the game shine, in my opinion. I also like the artwork for this game. The artwork for this game is rather nice. It reminds me of going around and venturing through the world. I see this like Final Fantasy 7 or 8 style world map and this is me in this house and I'm conducting my military to move across the board. Kind of like those guys who would push those military pieces across the large terrainscape to do battle. That's how I feel this game functions as well. And when battles take place it's not this bloody conflict. It's just simply who has the best strategy and who has the best cards to back it up or tactics in which case they're likely are going to win. In. Overall, this is a solid, fun little game. I, my only gripes with, gripes with it is I want to play with more than about I want four or more players to play the game, and I definitely think that players need to really be careful of what actions to choose and when to choose them because it makes a huge difference how you choose to go about the game. And then, of course, the fact that if you're playing a battle and you place out two cards, it's highly likely that your opponent will know the other two that you have left in your hand, and even possible if you didn't play the correct cards down, you might end up with a weak spot that your opponent instantly notices, which in that case you will simply just lose. Overall, Terrain, solid games, definitely something you should check out down below if you're interested in this game. Let me know whether there's something you want to pick up, why or why not. Alright, outro. Thank you guys for watching another Unfiltered Gamer board game review. If you like this video, check out the rest of our videos here on YouTube. Like, subscribe, and comment, and hit that bell notification button right next to that subscribe button. It does help us, and it lets you know when we put out new videos, Cali Corner videos, review videos, walkthroughs, and playthroughs, and of course, our weekly live stream every Wednesday at 6.30 p.m. PST on Facebook, which we also do pit posts here, as well as our website. We do blog posts, giveaways, Kickstarter lists, and more. Get ready to see our Halloween list coming out very soon. Thank you guys so much for watching and as always i look forward to destroying the terrain with you next time it's pretty pretty solid there i think also what the heck we have rain tokens that are honorable and dishonorable, but they're both the same. It's just how you acquired them. You should definitely in the expansion make it so that the dishonorable ones do something different or give you some unique effect that affects the cards in some way. Definitely something to think about. But I mean, I didn't have a, it's not really a critique or anything because I don't know if it's like a positive or a negative, just something that was bizarre to me that I couldn't figure out for some reason.